Our team builds a number of the core apps that make up the ArcGIS ecosystem. Products like Workforce, Operations Dashboard, Explorer, Collector, and Navigator. Like you, we use the Esri APIs every day. And this year, we're going to move all of our apps to the latest version of the ArcGIS Runtime and the JavaScript API. So today with me are Eric Ito and Nick Black. And we thought we'd take a look at some of the work that we're doing this year. And what better way to do that than with a David Letterman style top 10 list? So without further ado, here's number 10. Number 10, vector base maps. The release of vector tiles gives our apps, as well as you as developers, access to beautiful, efficient base maps. These maps look great even while rotating, with labels reorienting. They're smooth and crisp, and they look great on all of the latest high-resolution devices. Not only can you use these out-of-the-box base maps, but you can also create your own via custom styles. Styles such as night mode, which are geared towards low-light usage, all the way to this cool color pencil style. In 2017, we were really excited to be bringing vector base maps to life in our apps as we move to the Quartz SDK. And you can check them out for yourselves in Workforce and the Explorer beta. Now on to number nine. Number nine, mobile map packages. Here's Explorer, and you can see I have a whole bunch of maps here listed. Some of these are web maps, and some of them are map packages. Now, to work with a map package, I first need to download it. This morning, um, Devesh introduced you to map packages and showed you how you could use them in your apps to make it easy to take a map offline. And we've been doing that for a while with Navigator, but this year we'll be adding support for map packages to Explorer as well as the other apps. Now, the map package contains all the data, the symbology, as well as things like bookmarks and feature pop-ups um, and support for related tables. But you can see the map looks great. And working with it is just like working with a web map. And that's the important thing for us. We want the user experience working with map packages to be the same as working with a web map. That's mobile map packages. Now on to number eight. Number eight is user-centric design. Collective for RGIS is our most popular and widely used mobile app. And every day, thousands of people use it to collect and edit geographic data. Moving Collector to the new runtime is a great opportunity for us to modernize the UI and take a fresh look at the user experience. You're watching some video footage from usability studies we've been doing on the new experience for collecting data. We built two, two prototypes for the study and invited 24 users to the Redlands campus to participate. Observing real users like Ryan from the county of San Bernardino and Solomon from the city of Rancho Cucamonga is a fantastic way for us to gain insight and to refine the design before we ship. So that was number eight, user-centric design. Next up, number seven. Number seven, sliding panel. Recently, we've been looking at how we display information on top of the map. In the past, we'd use a callout or a summary view and then transition to a full screen to show, show more details. The sliding panel makes that transition very smooth. And the map's always visible. So it's easy for me to switch between full details and a partial view and a summary view. It's just a gesture. That's the sliding panel. Now, number six. Number six, clustering. Here I am in the Workforce web app. And I'd like to show you how we use clustering to help visualize information. So I have a project here with assignments for outdoor ice hockey rinks in the Ottawa area. And there's a lot of information here, and it can make it kind of difficult to identify individual assignments because they overlap. So to help me, I can turn on clustering. And you'll see that now the assignments have been grouped together, <clears throat> letting me know how many are in a given area. So next, I'm going to filter by a location. And then I'll select some assignments. You can see now that the clusters indicate where these selected assignments are. If I go ahead and zoom to the extent of these selected assignments, you'll see that the clusters adjust. Some individual assignments are selected, while others remain in their clustered state with slices filled in proportionally. 
So as you can see, clustering is a great way to visualize a lot of information while still allowing your users to identify particular information within the map. That's number six clustering. Moving on to number five. Number five is the evolution of the operations dashboard. The operations dashboard brings together data from multiple sources and presents it in a comprehensive and engaging way. Nowhere is that more important than during planned events, when sometimes you need to make decisions quickly at a glance. The dashboard has been used to support security at sporting events like the Chicago and Boston marathons and the NFL season opener. Previously a desktop app, the dashboard is now a fully functional, extensible web app. It's been redesigned and rebuilt on top of the Ember framework using Esri's JavaScript API. The dashboard you see here is a seamless mosaic of tiles designed to take up 100% of the browser window. Tiles can be grouped and stacked, so screen real estate can be used more effectively, and further details can be revealed as they're needed. So that's the evolution of the dashboard. New streamlined design, complete web architecture, making decisions easy at a glance. Moving on to number four. Number four is markup. Collector is our app for field data collection. People use it to capture authoritative GIS data. But our customers have asked for a more ad hoc mechanism that they can use in the field. They want to simply mark up the map. So Explorer introduces this concept of markup. Now, I can easily create markup by long pressing on the map. I can quickly change its color, maybe add an arrow, pick up the arrow and reposition it. I can also create lines and areas. Now, we wanted markup to be really easy to use. And one example of that is that if I sketch something on the map that looks like a shape, Explorer recognizes it as such, so I can easily convert it. Now, the next thing I might want to do with my markup is to share it. I can share my markup directly with other Explorer users, or I can push it up to ArcGIS Online, where we create an item that can be consumed by the online map viewer or by ArcGIS Pro. That's markup. Now on to number three. Number three, URL schemes. So one of the things we've been working on in our apps is ways for you as developers to integrate with them. The way we currently support this is through URL schemes. An example of that is our Navigator app, our Navigator scheme. We allow you to launch it from your app and provide navigation directions for your users. So I have an application here that shows locations nearby that currently have Hangar 24 beer on tap. I can select a place and view more details, such as which beers are on tap, as well as get directions via Apple Maps. But what if I wanted to use Navigator? Well, we have a Navigator integration repo on our GitHub page, and it contains sample code in Java, Python, and Swift. Now, I've already downloaded the Swift file and added it to my Xcode project, so let's see how we would wire this up. So the first thing I'll do is bring in a snippet of code, and then I'll rebuild this app as we walk through it. First, we'll create, or we'll check if we can open Navigator and that it's installed. Next, we'll create a UI alert action with our Navigator text, a default style, and a closure that gets invoked when the user taps Navigator. Inside there, we'll create our Navigator URL scheme with a destination and a name. We can grab the URL from this scheme and then we can take our, take our application's shared instance and open the URL. The last thing we need to do is take this nav action and add it to our alert controller. This way, the user will get prompted. So now that I've added this integration to our app, I can select a place again. And this time, when I hit directions, you see I can select Navigator. Navigator's launched. It's solved the route. And now I'm on my way to beer. That's it for URL schemes. Side note, if you're interested in finding out where Hangar 24 beer is near you, you can download this app today on the App Store. Just search for H24 on tap. Now on to number two. Number two is our methodology. So like all of you, we are passionate about creating innovative products. And I'd like to share an insight into how we work. Yeah. So before we start designing or writing any code, 
We like to ask ourselves, what incredible benefits can we give to our customers? Who are we building this for, and what do they need it to do? Both design and assets are crafted as a, as a set of reusable components built upon the runtime and shared across products. This benefits both, both us and the customer because the experience is consistent, and we only need to design and code each component once. 2017 is a really exciting year for us as we release new experiences for our flagship applications. You'll start to notice our apps coming together under a more cohesive design system that pair a streamlined user experience with a fresh and modern UI that we know our users are going to love. Now, I'm sure you're all excited to hear what number one is. Take it away, Jeff. Number one. La La Land. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, sorry. Uh, number one is to meet the team. And we could only cover a few things here this morning. Um, but we'd really, we're, our whole team is going to be here this week, and we'd really like to talk more with you, not just about the apps that we're building, but about just building apps in general. So um, we have a number of technical sessions and workshops that you can attend. Um, stop by the showcase, and definitely come to the Meet the Teams event tonight.